we're going to talk about the TSPS fund, S as in Sierra or small cap index might be a better way to look at that because it's literally that's what it is. It's a smaller, more of the extended market index. The more one of the more volatile of the TSP uh, investment allocations that we have out there. So welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends, the place you come to learn about all your TSP options to include everything else under the sun, financial planning related. When it takes Social Security, how to reduce your taxes in retirement, how to reduce your taxes before you retire, investment, estate planning, cash flow, you name it, you're going to find it here at Heritage Wealth Planning. So go ahead and hit that little red button down there to subscribe. You see a little red button that says subscribe. Go ahead and click on that. And once you do, don't forget to click on the little bell to be notified for future content. We do an episode a day here. So we want to keep you in, up to date of all that's going on in the financial planning world, because believe it or not, Things change all the time, not just investments, but things change from taxes. And particularly every time somebody's in session, be it your state legislature or Congress, taxes are always going to change. You got to keep ab above that for sure. All right. So let's dive right into the TSP S fund. Uh, now we're starting to get the more aggressive of the funds. The, the G and the F are the bonds. The C is a large cap. The S is a small um, to midsize index, kind of like the extended market index. If you're familiar with Vanguard or USAA has an extended market index. And let me just briefly explain what that is. So you have the total stock market and there's an index VTSMX, VTSMX. Yeah. From Vanguard VTSMX. Yep. Uh, five. If you're doing a mutual fund symbol, have five letters, by the way. So any mutual fund, or if any ticker with five letters, that's going to be a mutual fund. So the Vanguard total stock market index is VTSMX. And what that is, is the entirety essentially of the U.S. Uh, stock market. That's really only 5,000 stocks, but the vast, vast, vast majority of those 5,000 are represented or of those stocks are represented in the uh, total stock market index. That can be divided up into two uh, further indices. One is the S&P 500. So you take the total five, the total stock market, that's 5,000, the Wilshire 5,000. You take the top 500 in market cap and you put that to the side, that's the S&P 500. The remainder is the Wilshire 4,500 or the extended index, which includes uh, the uh, other 4,500 of the lower market capitalizations. We're not getting pink sheets, we're not getting penny stocks or anything like that. We're just getting publicly traded stocks with much lower capitalizations than the, uh, the S&P 500. But that's there is growth there. And if you look at the performance, which you will, you can see that some years it does phenomenally well and other years not so much. So let's dive into it. The uh, TSP.gov is where we always start. Go to investment funds and then we're going to go to fund options right here to get a, a, a what they say is the S fund. And we'll just click on the um, S fund right here. So let's see what they say about the S fund here. And you get a little video if you want to watch. Uh, the S fund's investment objective is to match the performance of the Dow Jones U.S. completion total stock market index. I guess they're not using the Wilshire 4500, but basically the same thing. That's the broad market index made up of stocks of U.S. companies not included in the S&P 500, just like we said. Uh, invest in stock market. We already talked about that. Uh, it does an indexing approach to investing. In other words, it's a passively managed fund that remains invested according to the investment strategy of the index. So it's always going to be fully invested, not having cash here, not having cash. And so, and again, in theory, in down markets, the indexes should do worse than actively managed because actively managed, in theory, can identify a down market, get out in time, and keep a good cash component in order to eliminate some of the risk. It, there's no proof of this, but that's the theory behind it because the stock market index is 100% invested. There's no cash. Uh, risk, subject to market risk, we talked about that, um, and rewards because it's a uh, high risk, carries high rewards. So that's uh, that's good. Um, let's see if they talk about expense ratios. They don't there. Let's talk about performance. But the expense ratios on the TSB as a whole is uh, basis points. So that's... <laughs> So 3.3 basis points, that means 33 cents per thousand invested per year, which is incredibly cheap, which I love. All right, so let's go over the annual performance. So uh, since uh, 10 years, we have averaged 9.15. And since inception of May 2001, we've averaged 9.27. So if you do the rule of 72, you take 72 divided by 9.27. That means your investments have doubled every 7.76 years in this. 
All right. So if you started in 2001 and we've had, was that 15 years of basically, so 2016, you'd have had $400,000 in this account if you started with 100000 in 2001. That's not too shabby given what we've gone through to include in that right there. That's a 2008 where we got hammered. Uh, now, I'm just curious, what did the C fund, I think it was eight and a half, I believe. Let's see here. Uh, the C fund, let's go to performance, if I'm not mistaken. Remember, C fund is large caps. S fund is small to mid-sized caps. Yeah, eight and a half. So C fund's done eight and a half since uh, 10 years. And uh, the S fund has done a little bit above that. Where it was a nine point, uh, nine point something, 9.27, is that what it was? Um, 9.37. So uh, a little bit different in performance. Um, a lot of the similarities in terms of when the markets got hammered, they they both got hammered for sure. So let's just, I'm just curious to see. So let's go if we can find year by year fund performance. I want to compare this actually. Yeah, here we go. Annual returns. This is what we want to see. Let's do this in investment funds chart. That's a G fund. You can see a steadily downward yield. That's the F fund, similar, not quite as drastic, or but similar, going down steadily in terms of the yields that you're getting. That's a C fund, choppy, and here comes the S fund, um, choppier. I mean, look at that. This is C fund's 38%. That's the S fund, 43% on both sides. This is 38 on both sides. So a little bit choppier with a little bit better performance that inherently is to be a, a predicted for sure. Uh, down, 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 down. So we've had five years down of the, was that 17, 16 years has been around. So that's uh, well, yeah, basically what every, what, every 25 to 30%, we've had a down year where the S&P 500 fund is not quite as bad. In fact, I think the S&P 500, about uh, 30%, maybe 25% of the time is down, something like that. But I think it is 20 to 25% of the time it's down in any given year. And this is about 33% of the time or so. So uh, that's pretty choppy. I am curious. So let's go up here and I want to see the table. So I'm going to show you something. Uh, so we have their performance and here's the S. So we started it. Uh, it only gives us 10 years. Let's see. 38.32 is down in 2008. Let's see what the Vanguard extended market did in, in uh, 2008. I would be, yeah, 38.73. So, there you go, 38.32, uh, 38.73 was the extended market index from Vanguard. The next year is up 37.43. The next year, this guy was up uh, 34.85. So basically a lot of similarities to the extended market index from Vanguard, that's for sure. So at the end of the day, you've seen the risk of the S&P 500, uh, or the uh, extended market index fund, the S fund here. Uh, it can give you pretty good returns for sure. i give you an example. Let's look at this guy, the Vanguard fund. You know, lots of green, but there is some red in there. And if you just look, I mean, we got negative 14% in 1990, uh, down 15, 9, and 18 in 2000, 2001, and 2, 2008, down 38. And then we had another down here, 3.39. Uh, you know, the facts are the market, the extended market index with, with the small caps are going to give you potentially more return but certainly more risk as well. Um, is it worth taking on the more potential for return, even though you're only saying, well, it's only 1% more I might be able to squeeze out of this fund than the large cap? The answer is yes, absolutely. That 1% compounding over time can make a significant difference in your performance. And just don't get around that. So you'd want to include the S fund into your aggressive portfolio without question. You don't just want to be top heavy solely in the C fund. You don't, you got to avoid the, the desire to just invest in the companies that you think you know, uh, because a lot of those funds that the companies that are in the C fund now started in the S fund. And because of that, they've been able to grow and expand. And the people who invested in those companies were able to grow and expand as well, even though a lot of companies also went bankrupt. It's just choppier, just choppier. But ultimately, you should outperform the S fund than the C fund in the long term. I'm talking 10, 15, 20 years, simply because it's more risky, without question. But that's a big should. doesn't mean you will. It just means that historically, we've seen a little bit of outperformance. We're not talking much. We're talking a point, if even that, but it's worth it, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, big fan and invest in as part of your aggressive position in your overall portfolio, for sure. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Again, the fees are low. The returns are good. Uh, there is volatility in there. If you buy any of this thing without thinking you're going to lose money, you're, you're just you're mistaken. You're going to lose money. As long as you don't sell it, though, the money doesn't leave your account. 
Now, could it ever go back, go down and stay down? Absolutely. No one knows the future. No one has any clue at all. If we can have any guy from history, and that's always a challenge, but that's all we got. Then you want a diversified portfolio to include things like the S fund. Hope this helps, my friends. Like I just said, subscribe. Comments down below, please. Uh, thumbs up are always helpful. Share the video with your friends and neighbors. Absolutely. And then, uh, again, hit the notification bell to be notified. And uh, go to the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel or Heritage Wealth Planning blog post at heritagewealthplanning.com, heritagewealthplanning.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.